We're four friends who live across the globe and share a love of Bon Appetit's YouTube channel. So we came together to bring you our thoughts on what BA serves up and try our hands at recreating their dishes. Welcome to Pod Appetit. Hey everyone, it's me, Meg, and I'm here to make ghost cake, aka angel food cake. If you listened to episode six, The Hunger Games, but with whipped cream, you may remember that we talked about the Bon Appetit video where Claire makes angel food cake. And in that episode, I said that that would be the recipe I'd be most likely to make. And wow, I'm actually doing it this time. So that's exciting. And I'm very excited to announce that I have a special guest with me here today. My mom, also arguably Pot Appetit's number one fan. Well, why don't you say hi, Mary? Hello. Hey, I'm happy to be here. We're very happy to have you. So much like the Test Kitchen staff, my mom has been developing recipes essentially ever since she was a kid. If you listen to our first episode introducing Pot Appetit, you may remember that I talked a bit about my mom's cooking contest and recipe contest background. But since she's here with us today, I'll let her tell you about it herself. I love food and I love being creative with recipes. So they married when I started entering recipe contests and when I was a kid about, oh, I guess I was about 11 and thinking about the upcoming Pillsbury Bake Off contest. And that's when I started working on it, but actually didn't win anything for mm, maybe 30 years or so when I actually went to the Pillsbury Bake Off for the first time. Since then, my recipe and cooking winnings have brought lots of fun, lots of travel, prizes including a new truck, a total kitchen remodel, money for fun things like new cars, college educations. <laughs> uh, so it's been a great experience. Trips to Disney World with your lovely daughter? And trips to Disney World with my lovely daughter. <laughs> yes, indeed. Trips to New York City about four times, I think. Trips to Napa, Sonoma about four times and various other places across the United States. Free trips, I might add. <laughs> well, that's a lot of accomplishments. Unfortunately, during all those trips to New York, that was before Bon Appetit's YouTube channel was huge. So my mom yes. did not get an opportunity to visit the test kitchen. <laughs> But speaking of all of your accomplishments, do you have a favorite, something you're most proud of, a recipe you're most proud of you'd like to share? That's hard to say, quite honestly, because I like so many different kinds of foods. I particularly enjoy making Mediterranean or Greek foods or Southwestern influence foods. But one of the ones I think that was the most fun was the recipe that took me to the Pillsbury Bake Off the first time. And that was like a an Italian stromboli, I might say. I called it Hot and Hardy Heroes. And that was just a lot of fun to make and one of the best tasting ones I think I've ever made, too. Feel free to write in with your strong opinions about heroes versus hoagies versus subs. <laughs> so do you feel like you can relate to the Test Kitchen staff in any way? I do, because they're experimenting. I think they're enjoying what they're doing. They seem to really like their creations, eating them, that is. And that's what I enjoy, too. I like creating, experimenting, eating the finished product. I certainly don't have the background they have in the science of food, but I can certainly understand what they're doing and enjoy watching what they're doing when I'm watching a video. As a complete amateur, I also enjoy watching them. And as you probably know, eating is definitely my favorite part of cooking. <laughs> So we're going to be soon enjoying the angel food cake we're going to make. This is Claire's recipe for BA's best angel food cake. Did you have any thoughts about the video we watched? I thought it was well explained and well produced. I did have a couple of things that I thought of when they showed the finished product. I thought it would have uh, have a little more height to it. Oh, looks so, tall to me. It was over the top of the I tube pan. I didn't think it was. Mm. I thought it was lower. But I just had that expectation. It looked lovely. The texture looked wonderful. There were a couple of things that I might have added to it, but I thought it was quite an informative video. My mom has some other critiques with the recipe, but we'll probably <laughs> get into that when we are actually making the cake. So what are your thoughts on angel food cake in general? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you ambivalent about it? 
I love angel food cake. When I was growing up, my family members made it quite frequently, and I thought it was absolutely delicious. So, of course, I had to try making it. That's why my angel food tube cake pan, I think, is probably about 40, 45 years old. (laughs) Do you have a favorite topping for angel food cake? I generally would eat my angel food cake plain. That was Mm -hmm. the way my family always served it. When I would make it, I would sometimes add a very simple glaze, vanilla or strawberry. Did you say your aunties used to make it? Is that right? My mom would make it. My aunts would make it. When, oh, this dates me, but when um, packaged boxed angel food cakes came out that you could make from a mix. My mom switched from homemade to the mix, (laughs) but my aunts continued to make from scratch. (laughs) In episode six, when we were recapping the angel food cake YouTube video, I said that I had never had homemade angel food cake to my recollection. And once my mom heard that episode, she was quick to correct me that, (laughs) yes, I had had homemade angel food cake. Yes, when we lived at a city at sea level, angel food cakes turned out quite nice. But when we moved, when you were very, very young, to a city that was at a much higher elevation, my angel food cakes were a major fail. After two times, I gave up on making angel food cake at a higher elevation. How were they a fail? They did not rise properly. And or when I took them out of the oven, they continued to sink. So I gave up on making angel food cake from scratch at the higher elevation. Well, hopefully we'll have better luck today. (laughs) I I hope so. I hope so. (laughs) I mentioned in the previous episode that I was a little hesitant to make this recipe because I didn't have a tube pan and I wasn't sure if I wanted to commit to a tube pan just for one recipe, despite Claire's encouragement saying that it was worth it even just to make angel food cake. So my less simple solution was to come visit my parents and use their tube pan. (laughs) So we're going to head to the kitchen and get started on the angel food cake. We'll be right back. It looks like the first step is to preheat the oven and start whisking together some of the dry ingredients. I'll preheat the oven. 325, right? That's right. My mom has one of those cool flour sifters. It's got the little grippy handle and it well, sifts the flour through the little mesh. I don't have one of these. It's a pretty cool little tool. It says one cup cake flour sifted, which generally means you measure one cup of cake flour and then sift it. Mm -hmm. If you sift it first, Mm -hmm. then it says one cup sifted cake flour. I know it's a very fine distinction, but... No, I understand. That's what I was going to do. Yeah. Oh, okay. (laughs) We have a lot of uh, cake flour over the counter, too. Flour everywhere. Do you need a knife to even it? Sure. So here's a tip about measuring flour if you didn't know. It's usually best to scoop flour into your measuring cup instead of dipping the whole cup into the flour because that will compact the flour and give you an inaccurate reading. So it's best to sort of heap the flour into the measuring cup and then level it off with a knife. When I'm really being particular, sometimes when making bread recipes, I actually weigh the flour. Well, I know the test kitchen would definitely approve of weighing things because that is the most accurate. And they use food scales a lot, but Mm -hmm. they try to make their recipes approachable for the average home cook, which is why I think they do cup measurements, much to LJ's chagrin. (laughs) Okay, I'm sifting some flour. This is going to be some good foley, I promise. Or at least I hope so. Now two-thirds cup powdered sugar. Oh, it's already ready already. Yeah. It doesn't say it, but I would sift that too because powdered sugar can sometimes be fairly lumpy. Yeah, I think Claire might have mentioned that in the video. I think she did. Look good? It looks good. Okay. <laughs> this is how my mom and I usually cook together. She watches me and then <laughs> swoops in when I mess up. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> The girl's exaggerating. (laughs) I think I broke your sifter. Yeah, I think it got stuck. (laughs) It did break. (laughs) Okay, just whack it on the side. That should make it go through. Do you want me to sing or anything while you're doing that? Sure. 
There we go. Okay. Oh, now it's fine. It's fine. I fixed it. All right. Next is a part of the recipe I was looking forward to slash dreading, perhaps, which is the egg whites from 12 to 14 large eggs, which is a lot of yolks and whites to separate. What's your tip for separating the yolks and whites? Well, I just got the carton of eggs out of the fridge, so the eggs are cold. Egg whites do whip better if they're more at room temperature, so I would suggest once we separate them, we leave the egg whites out for 30 minutes, or I can put them on the warming burner on the stove, and that would heat them up a little bit. But a mistake I've often made, if particularly if I'm using a lot of separated egg whites in a recipe, is I'll put them all in the bowl that I'm going to use to mix the egg whites. But if you get just a little strand of yolk in it, and that will really inhibit the volume and height you'll get from the egg whites. So what I do, even though it does take more time, is break each egg into a small bowl, separate the egg white, make sure the egg white has no yolk in it before adding it to the bowl that will get used for beating the egg whites. That way, you know, maybe you're on egg 12 and you get a little yolk in it and you've ruined 12 egg whites. What's your method? Do you shift the yolk from half the shell to the other half of the shell? Do you crack the egg into your hand and let the white separate through your fingers with leaving the yolk in your hand? What do you do? I got fancy one time and bought a, an actual egg separator and kind of thought it was crap. So uh, now what I just do is break the egg shell and uh, separate it by going from shell to shell to shell until I get the egg white out. All right, great. So I guess we will start separating them eggs now. Go for it, Meg. (laughs) So I have a liquid measure cup here where we can put one and three quarters cup in there. Guys, I'm really bad at separating the whites from the yolks. I might leave some of this to my mom. So have you decided what we should do with all these yolks? No. Typically, I would use a lot of egg yolks for pudding or pastry cream, but 12 to 14 egg yolks is quite a few. So as Megan knows, I am fond of doing, the egg yolks will probably go into the freezer. (laughs) She puts everything in the freezer. Here comes egg number one. Ooh. Ooh. Uh. Ooh. Looks good. Want me to do the next one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, check that. The egg yolk broke. It looks okay to me. Let it be noted that my mom messed up before I did. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost at one cup. Oops, oops, oops. I think it's okay. Yeah, looks okay. So we just went through a dozen eggs, and it looks like we're just about one, three quarters, maybe a little shy. Do you think we're okay? I'd say we're okay. That's how you're going (laughs) to... My mom apparently plans to whisk the flour and powdered sugar with the tiniest whisk I've ever seen. Uh, All right, well, uh, (laughs) you do you. All right, so on to... The fun slash, I think, challenging part, we're going to be beating the egg whites to make that meringue base. I've never made a meringue before. I'm sure my mom has made billions. We'll see how this turns out. So the next step here says to beat the egg whites, cream of tartar, and salt in a bowl of a stand mixer. Mom, you have opinions about salt in this recipe? Yes, I I do have strong opinions about salt in this recipe. As far as I can tell in this particular recipe, the salt is added for flavor rather than any specific chemical reaction. I think one teaspoon of kosher salt is way, way too much salt for a cake with one cup of cake flour. So even though I I really hated to say this, I recommended that we cut it down to a quarter teaspoon table salt. I did do some research online and checked with about six very credible food websites with recipes for angel food cakes. And typically for this amount of cake flour and eggs, the typical use was one quarter teaspoon table salt, Uh, I did see one with half a teaspoon table salt, so I really think we should cut down on the salt because my fear is that it will be salty tasting. My mom, like many Bon Appetit viewers and readers, 
does not trust the amount of salt that VA recommends. So we are going to deviate from the recipe a little bit based on my mom's advice. I'm sure it'll turn out great. And I do agree that on paper, a lot of times, Bon Appetit's salt recommendations seem like a whole hell of a lot. We all know how they love to salt their pasta water, but so far it's worked for me. But I'm sure this will be great. Meg, the egg whites are cold. Do you want to let them sit at room temperature for 30 minutes or maybe warm them a little bit on the stovetop warmer burner? I prefer not to risk cooking them. (laughs) Your call, if I remember correctly, I do believe that when Claire made the video, I did not note that she let the egg whites come to room temperature. And uh, some current thought is that you really don't need to if you're using an electric mixer. Warming them up a little bit lets the proteins relax and create greater volume. So we'll leave the call to Megan. The thing is about Bon Appetit's YouTube videos is that they don't show everything in the video, obviously, because then it would be three hour long videos. So it's quite possible that the egg whites were at room temperature and just it was not shown on camera. So we are going to pause and come back to our egg whites momentarily. All right, we've got our slightly less cool egg whites. We're going to put them in the bowl and start beating them with the cream of tartar and salt. As we mentioned before, the egg yolks or any type of oil in your bowl will really, really slow down the beating of the egg whites and you just don't get the same volume. So we really wiped the bowl out very, very well, made sure there was nothing in there. Also, it's a good idea to use a stainless steel or glass bowl and not a plastic bowl because a plastic bowl can hold even minuscule amounts of oil in any cracks you might have. If you have a copper bowl, that's great, but do not use a plastic bowl to beat your egg whites. And as Claire also recommended in the video to wipe down your whisks, your beaters, in case there's any oil or protein on those as well. Here goes the eggs. This might sound disgusting. Mmm. <laughs> the cream of tartar helps to uh, stabilize the egg whites. Remind me how much salt did you, Dane, was appropriate? <laughs> I am suggesting one quarter teaspoon table salt. I would use the kosher salt, but the only kosher salt I have is very coarse grain, and I'm afraid that would not dissolve very well. All right, it's time to get to mixing. It says to start at a medium low speed to simply break up the egg whites for about 30 seconds and then to increase the speed and beat until the egg whites are very foamy and barely form soft peaks. This beater that we're using is a handheld electric mixer, and this particular one beats like crazy, even on the lowest speed, so be prepared. Start adding the sugar, you think? Mm, I'd say beat just a little bit longer. Already the egg whites are increasing in size by quite a lot, and we've got some soft peaks formed, which means it's time to gradually add the sugar. I'm really excited about this part, the cascading the sugar into the bowl. I just like that word. I think it'll be fun. So we're probably going to tag team it here with one of us mixing and the other one gradually pouring in the sugar. Here we go. I would suggest getting that top part there because it's not going in the middle. So Claire mentioned in the video that there tends to be a dead zone in the meringue towards the top of the bowl because the mixer doesn't quite reach there. She was, of course, referring to a stand mixer, but I seem to have also achieved the same bad effect with just my hand mixer. So I'm going to try to get the edges. Not quite. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, that looks good. Okay. This is looking great. This is just as Claire described. The firm peaks, they should hold and look like a bird beak. They're nice and firm and glossy. It's looking really lovely and fluffy. And now we're going to add the lemon and the vanilla. There go two teaspoons of vanilla extract, but we still need to cut the lemon open. Would you like to add something, Dad? I just came in to sneak a quick look at the peaks because you described them as being so pretty. And And they are gorgeous. (laughs) A bowl full of gorgiosity. Okay, here's the first half a tablespoon of lemon juice. Lemon juice, um, I believe, helps stabilize egg whites also. Megan is using her brute strength to uh, squeeze the lemon here. Okay, there's one and a half tablespoons. There's two. I'm feeling nervous. Claire said to work quickly. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Beat those babies. All right, that looks incorporated but not overbeaten, which is exactly where we want it. So it's time to scrape it into the oft-mentioned tube pan. Nope. We still have to add the cake flour and powdered oh, sugar. Oh, you're right. I've gotten ahead of myself by like a lot. That would have been a weird cake, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Trying to sift in one third of the dry ingredients over the meringue, and then we'll be working in thirds like Claire said to do. We're putting in about one third of the cake flour powdered sugar mixture. We're trying to get the sifted part in. What happened there? I was putting some of the cake flour into the sifter and then banged the sifter against the counter and got some more flour decoration on the counter and floor. There's one thing I'm really good at in the kitchen, and that is making a total mess. I'm going to make a recommendation, Megan. Mm-hmm. Because this beater is so, so strong, even on the very lowest speed, I'm afraid in adding this last third of flour, we might overbeat it. So I'm going to suggest folding in this last part and only resorting to the electric uh, beater if we're not getting incorporated. That sounds good to me because it is starting to look a little bit mm. crumbly and dry, which is an indicator of overbeating the meringue. So I agree, let's go ahead and do that. Adding that last third of the cake flour sugar mixture. Okay, it be added. Meg is following Claire's method of folding it in. She's doing quite an excellent job. Oh. I see some flour right in there, yeah. Think it's there, Megan? I don't know. What do you think? Does it look incorporated to you? I'd say so. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did we put everything in? Yep. Okay. Let's get the two pan. Now it's two pan time. All right. So following the instructions here, we're scraping about half the batter into the ungreased two pan and pushing it all around as Claire demonstrated. Mm, I'm envisioning this excellent baked angel food cake with dollops of whipped cream and fresh berries. Mm, mm, mm. You go, girl. (laughs) Oh, mom. (laughs) All right, so it's time to smush it into all the corners. Do you have an offset spatula? I do not own an offset spatula. Could I get a spoon, please? (laughs) Yes, ma'am. An offset spatula is one of those kitchen utensils I think I might have to get just because they use it so much on Bon Appetit. Oh, and also the tube pan that my mom has does have the little feet that Claire mentioned, so it'll be able to cool on its own, which is honestly a little bit of a disappointment to me because I thought I'd have an excuse to get some wine and have a wine bottle for cooling the cake. Oh, well, you're incorrect, Meg. We will get a wine bottle out. That's just tradition. You have to put a baked angel food cake, even if it has feet, over a bottle. All right. Well, perfect. Meg looks just like Claire the way she's spooning and straightening that out in the pan. I wish. (laughs) 
And May has a very nice decoration of egg white. Yeah, I've got some ring on my face. <laughs> Looks very good. Egg white on my face? Oh, oh, oh. Megan is very punny. Trying to get the very last bits of batter out of the bowl. Don't want to waste any. And I think that's it. And one thing I try to remember to do when I'm baking something in a tube pan, because you do have a lot of batter in there, I'll just take a knife and run it in a circle around the center to try to pop any air bubbles that might be in there. Voila. All right, we're putting it in the oven now, and we'll be back in 35 to 40 minutes, and hopefully it'll be beautiful. We checked the cake at 35 minutes, and it wasn't quite springing back to the touch yet, but now 40 minutes is just about up, and we're going to take it out of the oven. All right, it looks done. It doesn't quite have the ghostly white pallor I was expecting, but it looks nice and golden brown. And now we're going to invert the pan to cool. So I just flip it over the top. Mm -hmm. I'm a little afraid. Okay. There we go. <laughs> My mom cruelly lied to me about having wine slash a wine bottle. So we are just putting the tube pan on its built-in legs to cool. Any comments, mom? I thought the cake looked gorgeous and I can't wait to have some. But unfortunately, we are going to have to wait several hours. It says to let cool at least one hour. We are going to be doing much more than that because we're not serving this until dinner time. But we'll be back with the results and how it tastes. And we're back. We got the angel food cake out of the tube pan successfully. There wasn't any drama there. So we're just going to cut straight to eating this delicious cake. And we have some strawberries and blackberries and macerated them with some sugar, as Claire showed in her video as well, and made some whipped cream. And we're ready to eat it now. Are you ready, Mom? Yum, yum. Oh, it looks really good. It has a nice golden color. The height is nice. It springs back just right. Looks good. Yeah, nice springing texture that we saw just from testing to see whether it was done or not. As I mentioned before, it's got a little bit more golden color than Claire's did. So yeah, it's got a nice golden outside and really white fluffy center. And I'm ready to eat it. All right, let's go for it. Mm, really good flavor. Very light. Nice texture. Yeah, I love the texture of this and of all angel food cake. It's really bouncy it's really light. It's got that nice airy texture, pillowy, very spongy. It's not like a, a butter cake, of course. It just has a really light flavor to it, obviously, because it uses egg whites and, and not any egg yolks. Really yummy. Moist, but not, I don't know, it's kind of moist, kind of dry somewhere in between. I know that makes no sense, but it's <laughs> delicious. <laughs> it's just right. It's like the Goldilocks of cakes. You can also taste some of the vanilla extract, which I wasn't sure whether that flavor was going to come through. But Definitely. When you, yeah, when you have the cake on its own, there's a little bit of that vanilla undertone. It's really nice. And if y'all remember, we did cut down on the salt from one teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon, and I think it tastes really good. Yeah, it tastes good. It certainly doesn't taste salty. I'm not sure what the difference would have been, but it tastes really nice. Mm -hmm. Really good. Shall we add some whipped cream and berries? Yeah, let's add some whipped cream and berries. Okay, the whipped cream is nice and fluffy. Yeah, I didn't think there'd be anything to disagree with with the berries and the whipped cream. They go well with most desserts. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. Definitely a nice accompaniment to the cake itself. It is. Yeah, the berries have a little bit of sour flavor, which offsets the uh, sweetness of the cake. But when I watch Claire's video, it seemed to me she almost thought it was super, super sweet. But I don't. I think it's just right. Yeah, I guess it's not overpoweringly sweet. Kind yeah. of what I would expect from an angel food cake. Would you make this cake again? Yes. Yes, I would. Is mm -hmm. there anything else you'd do differently? Any modifications? Not that I can think of. Yeah, I would definitely make this cake again as well. I think I might have to get myself a tube pan. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a, a nice company dessert because it did look quite attractive. Yeah, really nice for serving guests. Well, speaking of guests, thanks so much for joining me on this episode, Mom. Hey, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for inviting me, Megan. It, it was really a pleasure. Ah, uh, yeah, me too. I had a great time. <laughs> and stick around. I will be back with one of the other Pod Appetite ladies, and I will tell her all about the Angel Food Cake experience. Bye. All right, welcome back. Time has passed, and I am now here with the lovely Amanda to talk about Claire's Angel Food Cake. Hey, Meg. So 
how did this go for you? Because this was a different experience since you weren't at home. Well, I guess technically you were home home, but you weren't like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a different experience because it wasn't the kitchen I'm used to. I had never actually cooked in my parents' kitchen before. My mom, the master chef that she is, though, has way more tools and bits and bobs and equipment than I have, though. And she had Mm -hmm. the tube pan that was absolutely needed for this recipe. So that was great. And she had a flour sifter, which I don't have. So there was a lot of equipment at my disposal, which was good. And yeah, it was just fun to cook with her and have her expertise on hand. Oh, nice. Did she have the offset spatula for getting everything (laughs) into the nooks and crannies? It's funny because we talked about that. And that is one kitchen tool that she doesn't have. And in the meantime, I have acquired one myself. It actually just arrived in the mail today. So I am the new proud owner of an offset spatula. (laughs) (laughs) Exciting. So I think I have to apologize here to my mom. I have to offer a mea culpa. So Amanda, so you know, and as the listeners will have just heard, when we were making this recipe, my mom said, that seems like way too much salt. That is very salty to me. And I kind of pushed back against that a little bit. I said, no, mom, you have to trust the salt measurements that they give in the recipe. But my mom is a very knowledgeable chef and her instincts were right. And we did cut back on the salt. So we recorded this literally months and months ago, back in September. So this was back before I really knew just how big of a discrepancy there is between the salt in Bon Appetit recipes and what an actual home chef or baker may want to use. So back when we were recording, this was before I knew about the diamond kosher salt and just how vastly different the measurements can be. So I'm sorry, mom. I did trust you in the end, but I should have trusted you more. (laughs) And we cut back on the salt and the angel food cake turned out great. Oh, good. Oh, good. At least it wasn't like, we ate salt cake or something. Like. <laughs> no, fortunately, we listened to my mom's instincts and we cut back on the salt. And yeah, overall, it turned out great. I thought this was a lovely recipe. It was pretty much everything I wanted from an angel food cake. Light, fluffy, cloudy, pillowy texture, just barely golden brown, a little bit spongy, not too sweet. I really loved it. Yeah, I know this was like one of the first videos that we covered on our show. Yeah, it was. And it was one that I was really intrigued by. So I was really looking forward to seeing like how this went for you. And like, were there any were there any things along the way other than the 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 salt issue, which we're aware of now Mm -hmm. and that they in their newer recipes, they like put notes about it. But other than the salt, was there anything else that you found particularly challenging? That was really the only straight up modification that we made. I would say that the base level difficulty was maybe just a little bit higher than most baking challenges I undertake only because I had personally never made a meringue before. My mom had, so it was great to have her on hand to offer advice. And also there was the cracking of the eggs, which isn't difficult, but it just is a little bit finicky. It takes a little while. So you end up Mm -hmm. cracking 12 to 14 eggs and you have to separate the yolk from the white. So that was a little bit tricky, I guess. Uh, I don't know if tricky is the right word. It really wasn't hard. It was just you had to focus and you had to concentrate and make sure you weren't breaking the yolks and that type of thing. I wouldn't say that there were any difficulties, really. It was just following the recipe, make sure you did it right. There are some things that are a little bit counterintuitive from other cake recipes, like you don't grease the the pan. Right. Because that's one of her things is don't use a nonstick pan. Yeah. So there's certain things like that. And since you're working with the beaten egg whites, you really don't want it to deflate. So you have to be a little extra careful about not over mixing the batter. Yeah. I was wondering, like, how how did you guys handle the like 
the mixing of it because I know like you have to put the flour in really slowly and then sort of fold it with two of you doing it at the same time or did you kind of have like one person and the other stand back so it was very gentle less than the flour but more so with the sugar it was really important to really add the sugar gradually while mixing you're right about the flour Mm. but the flour was definitely a one-person job you just had to do it gently but the sugar was more of a two-person job because you wanted to have a constant speed on beating the egg whites while cascading the sugar into the bowl as Clara says so just like a slow steady stream of sugar yeah and it was just like tiny exactly. little bits at a time <laughs> exactly and typically you could do that with just one person if you had the stand mixer because you just let the stand mixer beat while you shake the sugar in but we were using a hand mixer so it was great to have two people because oh. it would have been really hard to try to do the hand mixer and slowly and carefully add the sugar at the same time. So I did the mixer while my mom poured in the sugar and it worked out great. Oh, yeah, that's oh, man, I can't believe you guys used a hand mixer for this. (laughs) It was funny because (laughs) I had the same thought at first. I was like, oh, no, mixing egg whites. This is going to be a disaster, not a disaster, but I thought it might take a really long time. I thought it might be kind of difficult but this hand mixer I'm telling you it was insane it was like a jet propeller it went so fast and whipped (laughs) the egg whites so much I was really impressed I don't know what brand it was otherwise I would get that for myself because I need a new hand mixer (laughs) because this is one that you know as I was re-watching the video I kept thinking you know much as I'd love to try this at some point I could not do it until I have a stand mixer (laughs) A stand mixer or a good electric hand mixer. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. And a tube pan. Uh, right, and a tube pan. <laughs> so you did this because your mom had the tube pan and it had the, the feet on it? It had the feet, yep. It was easier, although I was a little disappointed because I was looking for an excuse to have a bottle of wine. <laughs> Because in the video, they say to turn it over a bottle of wine. But no, it did have the little feet. As my mom says when I was talking to her, she's had that tube pan for probably a good 40 years or something. So I think those older tube pans do tend to have the little feet. Well, I mean, what else do you use a tube pan for? Yeah, that's pretty much it, to be honest. (laughs) So I think you have to justify having a tube pan by making a lot of angel food cake. I still haven't bought one in the meantime in the past five months months or whatever, because as much as I liked this recipe, not sure how often I'm going to be making it. Yeah, that was one of my, I mean, one of my questions we all of us ask is, is this a recipe that you would make again? I definitely would. It was pretty simple overall, even though I did just talk about a few of the more finicky things. But it was actually, I thought, easier than I expected. It tasted great. I would be very happy to eat it again. So if listeners want to get me a tube pan. (laughs) (laughs) Really, the only outstanding question I have about this recipe is what to do with the egg yolks, because you have 12 to 14 Mm. egg yolks at the end of the recipe, which is a lot of yolks. And the recipe does offer some suggestions, you know, like make a custard or something or pastry cream. But as far as I know, these egg yolks are still in a baggie in my parents' freezer. (laughs) (laughs) Much like Brad's fermented egg yolk goo pinned to the wall. Yeah. I was going to say, at least it's the freezer and not the wall. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, maybe I should tell my mom to take them out of the freezer and just put it on the wall and see what happens. Since apparently we will never know what's going on with Brad's egg yolk goo. (laughs) The cookies I made for our Christmas special, and I also made for other holiday stuff around here, uh, they call for egg yolks. So you could pair. <laughs> oh. I mean, it's another sweet thing, but you could pair like cookies and, and angel food cake. Yeah, that's a good idea. Tag team your recipe making so that you use up all your ingredients, all your weird ingredients. <laughs> Uh, So what did you end up serving the angel food cake with? Did you go with the berries as suggested or did you do something different? Yes, we went with the berries. My mom and I are definitely in agreement that we just love fresh berries on angel food cake. So we cut up some strawberries and 
blackberries, macerated them a little bit with some sugar and lemon juice and I think a pinch of salt, and then some whipped cream. So in the video, I believe Claire says you could even do unsweetened whipped cream because the cake itself is so sweet, and then there's sugar in the berries as well. We did add just a little Mm -hmm. bit of sugar to the whipped cream, but not too much because you didn't want to have sweet on top of sweet on top of sweet. I love fresh whipped cream. I love fresh berries. And I just thought it turned out great. And you get that nice little sauce from the berries after they've macerated a while. And you can Mm. pour a little bit of that sauce on the cake. It was really lovely. If you were going to pair the angel food cake with something other than berries and whipped cream, what do you think like you would pair it with if you made it again? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I would almost be tempted to just have it plain. I know that sounds really boring, but just having a chunk of angel food cake... Sounds good to me. (laughs) Yeah. Remind me, do you like angel food cake? I do. My grandmommy, my grandma on my dad's side, she was big into angel food cake in the 90s as like a quote unquote healthy cake, even though it's not really a healthy cake, but you know. uh. (laughs) Just because it's light in texture doesn't mean it's light in any other terms. Right, right. (laughs) So yeah, I am. That's why I was really intrigued to see how this turned out for you because- just re-watching the video even, I was just like, oh man, I could really go for some angel food cake. <laughs> like That just looks so good. What topping would you put on your ideal angel food cake? I feel like probably strawberries. I mm-hmm. feel like we did a lot of, instead of strawberry shortcake, it was like strawberries with the angel food cake as the base instead. Mm-hmm. That sounds delightful. I kind of wonder what it would be like with a little Nutella or something. Oh, that could be good. Yeah, definitely. You know, like not a ton, just like a little, a little bit to make it more of a nutty taste. I mean, I know it's chocolate, but it's like hazelnutty. So Mm. I'd try that. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for Angel Food Cake. Thanks again to my mom for joining me. And who knows, maybe someday again, I will make ghost cake. Ghost cake. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Pot Appetit, a Bon Appetit fan cast. We'd love to hear from you, so find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at pod underscore appetite. And on Facebook at Pod Appetit Podcast. You can also email us at podappetitepodcast at gmail.com and find all of our episodes on our website, podappetitepodcast.com. Until next time, the test kitchen is closed. Morning, Kelsey. I've got to tell you about this Regency romance I just read. Zoe, you're finished already? Oh, I couldn't put it down. Have you read anything new? (laughs) Not since you asked me yesterday. That's all right. I'll just find something I've read before. But Zoe, haven't you read and reread hundreds of these books? Well, they're my favorites. Far Off Places, Daring Damsels, True Love, and Dukes in Disguise. Since we both love these books so much, what if we made a podcast? Oh, but Kelsey... I insist! Well, all right, let's do it! Join us, real-life friends and real-life romance novel enthusiasts, every other week on Tea and Strumpets, a Regency Romance Review, as we discuss a book from our favorite genre and what makes it steamy or tepid. And, as the Regency period technically lasted only nine years, generally we're talking post-wigs, but pre-telephone. So whether you're looking for a book to add to your Tubi Red Pile, or you've read our choice already, we've got a little something for everyone. Read along or just listen in. You can find us on your podcatcher of choice, and new episodes coming every other Thursday. (laughs) 